Another win for the Boston Celtics last night on the road. They thankfully are over with their road games. They are now headed back home to play back in Boston. The last six of their seven games are going to be at home. But let's talk about what happened last night. 118-104. to The Celtics really didn't even look like they were playing at their 100% and still dominated the Charlotte Hornets. But they were missing one key player on their offense and their defense. Of course, that player is Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown was ruled out before the game as he's been dealing with a sprained left hand. Apparently, he did tweak this in the New Orleans Pelicans game. Apparently, he tweaked it a little bit before that, but it really got bad during the Pelicans, and he ended up dropping 17 points in that game with that hand injury. So he is expected to be evaluated when they do come back from Boston, but Gary Washburn of the Boston Globe did have something to say about Jalen Brown's injury update. He said, look, Jalen Brown said his left hand has been bothering him recently, and he's going to get it looked at, when the Celtics get back to Boston, didn't have it wrapped, didn't have it iced. And before the game against the Hornets, he was seen getting up shots in the pregame. So good to know that he can still use that hand, but it's just not feeling the best right now. Jared Wise also tweeted out that Joe Mazzulla said he isn't sure if Jalen Brown had sprained his left hand. He looked at it just yet, but that seems to be doing okay. So that's the good news in this. The bad news is the sense that the Celtics have gone all season long without having an injury. And now with seven games left in the regular season, you're going to pull this shit on me? I feel so bad for the kid, especially since Jalen Brown's been playing his best basketball this season. He is in the running for NBA All-First Team without a doubt. Plus, he's been playing his best ball coming back from the All-Star break as he's been averaging about 27 points per game and really been helping the Celtics hit their stride in this last half of the regular season. So to go on ahead and start off this show, I want you guys to go ahead and type seven down below. Show Jalen Brown some love. Let him know that we hope that his recovery is going well. The Celtics don't technically need him the rest of the regular season, but it just doesn't feel the same when one of your starters is out, especially what Jalen Brown has been doing this year. But the good news is that seven actually did give an update on his injury himself, saying, I'm going to get that looked at when we get back to Boston, but it's been bothering me for a little bit now. Overall, he said he's not worried about it. He says he's okay. But the fact that it's been bothering you, you guys know when your knee hurts, when your back hurts, it just kind of sits on you. I have sunburn on top of my head right now, and it's killing me to have a headset on. Not comparing it to Jalen Brown's hand, but you get what I mean. It's very easy for us to complain. The good news is that the big man upstairs, Joe Mazzulla, said that he is doing okay. Jalen Brown, since the All-Star break, has been un. Real 27 points per game, six rebounds per game, shooting 53% from the field, and even better, 38% from the three point line. We give a lot of credit to Porzingis and Jalen Brown, excuse me, Jason Tatum, and other players in the starting five. But Jalen Brown has really been pulling this entire team together on both sides of the ball. But the good news is they do have seven games left now. They were playing without him against the Hornets, which is why I put eight games left in the season that they didn't have Jalen Brown there. So like I said, since the Boston Celtics have already clinched the Eastern Conference, they don't have to win another game moving forward. We don't want that to happen. Those two losses against the Hawks nearly took me out. But I'm just saying that if Jalen Brown needs to rest, they can rest him for quite some time, especially when you kind of have three good opponents coming up in the last seven games. And there's only one game that's on the road, and that's going to be at Milwaukee. And that is actually one of the tough opponents they will have to play, but the Oklahoma City Thunder, we're going to be live for that on Wednesday. That'll be a tough game. Then you got the Bucks, the Kings, and the Blazers, probably not so much. But then on the back half, the last three games, you got one more game against the New York Knicks. And there is still that Northeast rivalry that I do think the Boston Celtics are going to be playing their full speed at that point. And then you get to kind of take a little bit of a rest for the Charlotte Hornets and the Washington Wizards. You guys, we're going to be live for all of these games. You guys do not want to miss it, but... With that injury update that I did just give you on Jalen Brown's left hand, I got to ask you guys, go ahead and scale your level of concern down below. Scale of one being not worried about it. He's going to bounce back. It's probably just rest. They're probably just making up stories. And I don't even trust Alec. That's your one. A 10 is the season's over. Pack it up. Go home. Nobody wants to play without Jalen Brown. So you can see how drastic it is. I'm going to give it about a six and a half just because Jalen Brown says it's okay. But I'm going to put it a little bit higher than a five just because the Celtics have not dealt with injury all season long, thankfully. Up next, I do want to break down something that we did notice here in the Boston Celtics versus Charlotte Hornets game. So you guys are going to want to stick around. Spinny and I are going to give a little breakdown of that game that happened last night. 
But until then, why don't you guys go on ahead and go to prizefix.com slash CLNS to play the number one daily fantasy sports app. And you can see why Smitty and I are so obsessed with this. One, because it's extremely fun to play. And two, because it's super easy. All you have to do is pick between two to six players and just pick more or less. That's it. It's extremely simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. And you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on prize picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app. As you can see, I took the biggest matchup in the NBA women's tournament yesterday. I had Angel Reese to have more than 12 and a half rebounds. Caitlin Clark to have more than nine and a half assists. Those were both fantastic. Drew Holiday have more than nine and a half rebounds and assists as well. So you can mix and match and you can fit whatever works for you. Just go to prizefix.com slash CLNS. Use that promo code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. We started off a little bit slow here, like we did against the Pelicans over the weekend, where we were really going back and forth and trading leads. And Smitty and I are sitting here being like, no way in hell. There is no way in hell we're about to go shot for shot until the end of the game with the Charlotte Hornets, the way the Celtics have been doing that with the Pelicans, with the Atlanta Hawks in two back-to-back -back games. And we're thinking, what is going on? And then it hit us, dead smack in the face. The Celtics are probably not playing 100% right now. We saw that against the Hornets, especially when they were really playing only like 65%. And Smitty, when we realize the Celtics are not full speed, head on, balls to the wall, playing basketball right now, they're still dominating. Totally, Allie. The Celtics in tonight's game just weren't giving it their all. And we can see that on this long road trip. It's been one of those situations where they just – can't give a hundred percent because yeah. one, you don't want to give, you don't, you don't want to risk injury. And two, it, it, it's draining. It, they haven't been home in, in over a, a week and a half now. So they've been playing teams that are, you know, not really on their level. So they're not really getting up for these games. And it, it, it's, it's apparent on the court. You, you, but again, in the game against Charlotte without Jalen Brown, I know they didn't have a mellow ball. They were able to kind of coast there in the second half. You were, and especially to have Tatum giving another double, double performance this season, 25, in 10 and he didn't even play the most minutes on the court right now we got to see a lot of bench players and one of those being sam hauser who tied the game yeah. high 25 points and i'll give you this though hauser was not giving us anything against the hawks he went two for seven two for ten in those two ball games so he was definitely due for a game like this and we have seen now the side effects of sam hauser not making his threes but when he's hot He's hot. And really, it truly takes like those first three pointers for me to really tell if Sam Hauser is going to have a good night or not. Honestly. And we've seen over the past two games or, you know, a couple of games before the Pelicans with the Atlanta Hawks that if the Celtics aren't making their jump shots, they're not going to be the best basketball team they could be. And that's yeah. apparent for any team, but more so for Boston, who lives and dies by the three pointer. And Sam Hauser is a big part of that. I mean, you saw it tonight seven for 11 from three. That's a massive cushion right. off the bench for a team that isn't particularly the deepest in the NBA. I know you have Al Horford off the bench. Peyton Pritchard's elevated his game this season. And Sam Hauser's the third wheel there on that uh, bench group. It's about eight deep this team goes. But, hey, if an injury occurs and a, and a guy's got to miss a playoff game or two, Sam Hauser has to step up and be yeah. good and, uh, on both be offense reliable. and defense where he has improved as well uh, this season. I do want to give this one bench player a quick shout out is Peyton Pritchard. The way that he has really upped his game on ball handling skills, on shooting, on facilitating, as well on defense. I've seen him have mismatches numerous times. When you see him going up against players like Miles Bridges, where you're immediately like, stop this. This is horrible. He's about to dunk on him and, and completely embarrass him. PP has held his own against some of the biggest guys that we have faced this season. And I think that he is just proving that he was worth that contract extension. I'm really excited to see what Pey Peyton Pritchard is going to do in the postseason. As since Drew Holiday was out for five games, we sat Derek White for one game. and one game, we had both of them out. PP really stepped up in terms of a backup point guard position. I, I think we're going to see some really clutch moments from Peyton Pritchard here in, in the playoffs. Not necessarily in the scoring column. Yeah, listen, he could hit a big three that could cap off a, a Celtics run yeah. into a timeout. But away from the basketball, crashing the glass, uh, especially the offensive glass, is something that I've seen from Peyton Pritchard that has just elevated his game and elevated his value in this rotation. Think about it a year ago 
Uh, Peyton Pritchard was not in the Celtics lineup. Yep. Uh, and it's apparent now that he is a key part of this team. The Celtics cannot win the championship if Peyton Pritchard isn't playing at the level that we know he can play at. And the fact that he's elevated his game this season is going to push this team a long way. I agree with that. I think when he once he realized he doesn't just have to be a catch and shoot kind of guy, yeah. he's, he's really kind of stepped back from his threes, as you can see, went 0 for 4. But I think when we saw Peyton Pritchard earlier this season, he was just trying to be that. Catch and shoot, make your threes. He was trying to be Sam Hauser. And now that he's really developed his game and now he's become a very good primary ball handler for the Celtics, I think it's elevated their bench role a lot more. And, 100%. And yeah. a couple, couple, so given a couple more shout-outs to a couple more Celtics guys tonight, obviously Al Horford, uh, he's been a great scorer for this team, shooting very efficiently from outside over the past couple of games. And then obviously Kristaps Porzingis, who against this the Hornets team, kind of a matchup nightmare, a couple of and ones, and uh, he, he was just showing his dominance inside. No, same thing for, for Al Horford, Chris Nass, Porzingis. You got Derek White, who was doing the same thing, 19 points, nine rebounds, nearly a double-double. And, and he Everybody played. just kind of did their job tonight, right? They really did, and that's what we needed because I was very nervous about those Hawks games about back-to-back -back having bad habits. But overall, I'm feeling a lot more confident in the Celtics moving on to these last seven ball games. So go on ahead and just give me your one-word reaction to the Boston Celtics versus the Hornets game. If you guys think it's just very comforting, it's surprising, it's, you know, lackless, just go on ahead and type that down below. And while you guys are at it, all you guys got to do is hit that sub button. If anything and everything that happens to Jalen Brown, we're going to talk about it here on Celtics Today by Chat Sports. I'll keep you updated on his injury. In the meantime, we'll do the work. All you guys have to do is hit that sub button for me.